It's time. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the basic training class. This is our lesson six, I believe, on timing. Hopefully, this has been a good series of uh, Shibboleth, uh, whereby you can take the Shibboleth shield and break it down and actually understand some of the more fundamental aspects of Shibboleth in not so long, drawn out, extremely extensive information poured into you as if you were trying to drink from a fire hydrant. So today's topic, just so you know, the reason why I just repeated all that is I failed to hit record. I have record press now. Y'all check in with me. Everybody say hello if you would. Set your chat to all panelists and attendees and, and you can uh, actually say hello to Jason right quick. Let me get my Facebook pulled up on my phone. I should be able to watch what's going on there. If anybody wants to, hey, there are, there are. If you'd like to communicate to us about this series or say anything that may help someone else along the way, feel free to chime in. However, today's class is on timing and timing specifically uh, and only, we may cover several different aspects of food timing, but for the most part, I'm gonna try to cover timing and, and and why we even focus on it and what it's all about. The first thing I'd like to, to pull up is, is timing is about the when, okay? When, W-H-E-N, when, when I do things is, and when I record things in my journal is the basis or the basic view or the basic take on timing period is always going to simply be when, if you want to really look at it as simple as possible, take all of the why out of it, take all of the what for out of it, simply look at it like this. Hey, Lamelda and Sean and Elizabeth and Regina and, and Kim and Katie, I'm glad y'all are with me and Mercedes, I'm glad you're with me as well. Gail, uh, Jeannie, Kelly, all you guys, it's, it's good to Joanne, glad y'all are here as well. Um, so, the first thing we want to look at is the basic way, like right when, right? But I'm going to cover some things that might make you understand this a little bit better. It might not, but it's definitely going to give you, it's going to take some of the what for and why out of the way. The first thing I'm going to talk about is called a basal metabolic rate. Our bodies burn calories uh, as long as we're alive, as long as your little heart's beating your body's gonna require calories to, to uh, stay alive. Calories are a unit of heat or energy uh, that, it, uh, that uh, it takes to burn up one decimal of water at a certain decimal at a certain rate. Really, calories are just energy. And uh, our bodies require energy as long as we're alive. The first thing about timing that we can consider is, is that our bodies need energy. Now, why does that have to do anything with, what does that have to do with time? Well, the basal metabolic rate, or your BMR, is the measurement of the number of calories required to, for your body to function when it's at rest. Basal uh, is basic or uh, baseline, the bottom. Uh, when we measure those calories, how many calories your body needs at rest, I'm getting the time and stay with me. We will understand uh, that we need to eat. Okay, we need to eat. Uh, and our body needs energy. Uh, we, as long as we're alive, we're going to be needing energy. Um, and then we have the dilemma uh, of having eaten too much in the past and we're wanting to lose weight. Uh, that's why you're here. That's why we're broadcasting in the members only class. And that's why this basic training lesson is focused on timing alone. So we want to lose weight. And timing is part of our shield. What does this basal metabolic rate or baseline metabolic rate have to do with anything? Well, there is the um, uh, circadian rhythm that almost all, pretty much all living things uh, has, the, has an effect on the circadian rhythm. I have a hard time saying it. Circadian rhythm is the 24-hour cycle 
that basically is in line with um, the sun going up and down. Okay, this, so in a 24 hour cycle, our bodies plant life, a lot of different things, mammals, other uh, uh, animals, deal with the effects of the circadian rhythm within this time frame. Okay, so this rhythm dictates so many different things that I'm not going to be able to explain it all because number one, I don't think I or anybody or any group or sect or any type of study can even nail it all down. But we know a lot about it. And one thing we know about it is during this rhythm, the body, our body, we'll talk about the human body now, it learns when to wake up, when to sleep, when to eat. It dictates so many things such as the, well, dictates, it, it affects so many things such as our, um, our physical wellness or our physicality, our mental wellness, or our ability to function mentally, as in on a scale, like I function best here, uh, better here, uh, less here, I'm asleep. My mental function is very, very little. And then we've got the behavioral effects of this cir circadian rhythm, where sometimes our behavior is affected by these things. And that, that stuff is really affected by a lot of things. Hormones are affected by this rhythm. Our, with, in other words, the release of serotonin, um, the, the release of insulin, um, the, the way our bodies, uh, our, our limbic system, uh, moving water around on our body and, and, and all of the different hormones that are released throughout the day and the night, all of these things are in tune with this circadian rhythm. Another thing, our blood pressure, our alertness, our coordination, our strength, our rest, et cetera, all of these things are affected by this rhythm. And let me, let me give you that, that let me, that, that's a big thing, right? I'm, I'm teaching y'all a really big thing and it's got a big name and y'all are gonna go look it up and you're gonna say, wow, circadian rhythm and, and BMR and, and you're gonna look up these things. This is what it's about, it's about time, okay? That 24 hour cycle that happens is time and it matters because our bodies are susceptible to calorie intake different at different times okay our bodies are more insulin resistant when we are at rest our bodies are more in tune to the functionality and the flow of insulin and the needs thereof. We need more insulin when we're awake because we're taking in nutrients and our body needs to tell those nutrients where to go. So timing is key in the distribution of nutrients throughout our body. Our body needs nutrients to perform certain tasks. And no, we're not, I'm not going to get into anything extensive when it comes down to this, but I need to have a basic understanding of our body has needs, a human body, it has needs, and we need to supply those needs for our bodies to function properly. That's right. And, and we can all go on right now and admit to ourselves that we have been over overfeeding ourselves for the most part some of us have eating disorders that are different than than others some of us eat we binge eat all day some people binge eat in the evening some people don't binge eat uh, some people just eat terribly uh, some people have uh, have um, functioning problems with their body that makes it hard for them to lose we have all kind we have diabetics we have people with with all kinds of, of issues we have fatty livers and we have you know, uh, poorly functioning kidneys and, and even uh, all, there, there's all kinds of stuff, heart disease, there's, there's all kinds of things to contend with. However, this system is going on for everybody.
the cir circadian rhythm is happening for everybody. As long as you're alive, you are susceptible to this rhythm. And keying into the way our bodies function is important. So calorie intake is the key to weight loss and weight management, period. Take in too many calories and we grow and or we have fat storage. Okay, too many calories in a day and our body stores the calories that it doesn't need and or are the wrong calories causing us to gain weight, put on fat, maybe build muscle. All of that stuff happens by calorie intake. Now, too few calories causes us to shrink. And this can happen in more than one way. Too few calories with the right nutrition causes us to lose fat. Too few calories with the wrong nutrition causes us to lose fat and muscle and or just muscle. So eating the proper nutrition is important. Now, like I said, this is not uh, a major lesson in Shibboleth on how to understand it, but it's, this is about timing. So the proper way for me to explain that is, is nutrition is key. Nutrition is important. Karen, Lynn, Lamelda, listen, uh, Marta, nutrition is key when it comes down to properly feeding the body and the body functioning the way it needs to function. So what is it specifically about timing that we can do uh, to make our weight loss experience better or more important to uh, more importantly what can i do personally to make this an important factor in my weight loss experience focus our focus on timing is the is one of the most key elements of understanding why timing is important. When I focus on timing, I tend to focus less on hunger. I tend to focus less on the food choices that I'm making. When I focus more on timing, the time or the when, the what is less important on the grand scale. If I'm taking care to learn the program along the way, no, stay with me. If I'm taking care to learn the program along the way, I'm probably going to be eating the things that I that I that that my body or that my tongue likes, right? The things that taste good to me or smell good to me or or look appealing to me. I'm going to be consuming those things. Hopefully, I'm going to be consuming them in the right portions and in the right combinations so they have the best chance of affecting me right in that measure. But if I'm looking at timing, really, it's about when. Okay, so patterns that we can watch and patterns that we can track are our focal, focal point. And they're going to be the focus element of the timing that makes this part of the shield the most important thing. So results we can trust. Results are what we can trust. Timing and patterns are what we can track. Results are what we can trust. Okay, backwards, right? I know, you're like, no, if my scale goes down, I'm trusting that. Well, listen, that's not necessarily true. We can more, more intently, we can trust the process and the patterns and the results we can track. The pattern and the process we can we can trust. The patterns and the process we can trust. Stay with me for a second and let me tell you how this works, okay? We're going to get into this briefly and then I'm sending you back to work or lunch or wherever you join me from. We have timing rules that start out, here it is, this is a 24 hour cycle, right? Also known as a circadian rhythm. There is a cycle here of night, no, let's go night and day. So I've got day and night, right? So roughly now this, the, we know that the earth is turned on an angle and it's not always gonna be 12 hours of one and 12 hours of the other. But for the most part, 
on Shaboeth, we work with a three to six hour eating window, which means if we ate at seven in the morning, 7 a.m., and at 7 p.m., we would have another meal in between, which would be our 12 hour window. This would go to the six hour side of our timing rule, okay? Three to six hours between meals. Now, we could, we could narrow that down any way, any way we see fit, paying attention to the pattern and how it affects our, our satiety, how well we're satisfied, our hunger levels, how well we make it through the day, paying attention to things like um, uh, whether or not I'm empty in the morning when I wait or whenever I wait. These are things that we can pay atten attention to. Now, timing is important. Timing is, Im is important. So when I look at it like this, I'm gonna erase this several times, I'm sure. When I look at it like that, I learn a lot because then I can start to make adjustments. So eating uh, three meals a day, right? And they're to be three to six hours apart. Three to six hours apart. There's one part of your timing rule. Now, we have a sleep rule and a wake rule. And for best practices, when I wake up, I want to eat within two hours. Before I go to sleep, I want to wait, right, three hours, okay? Now this, are you listening everybody? Everybody with me? I got 10 people watching me and I got a few people in the Zoom room. Listen, this is, this is a suggested study. This is a suggested study, okay? Now, Everybody on this, on this lifestyle has to eat to a certain level of practical application. You guys don't need to plug into something that you can't stick to or that it's going to make you suffer during the day because suffering without having the right mindset or without having a, a a grim, abstinent desire to do it no matter how you feel tends to lead to a feeling of self-neglect and people quit when they intentionally make themselves suffer. So we built this in to the program to let you know that this circadian rhythm is something that's real. And we're trying to give you a system of feeding yourself during the day where you can pretty much assure yourself that you're getting nutrients when your body can take in the nutrients, use them to the betterment of your physical health and be done with that process by the time you lay down and go to sleep. Because part of that insulin resistance that happens at nighttime is because, and, 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 this, and this, this three hour wait is because when you go to bed, those nutrients that you've got going around, your body's trying to rest. If it's having to digest food and send nutrients around in the body, it's not resting well. Do you want to have sound rest? Do you believe that sound rest has something to do with your health? I mean, if we're trying to be healthy, paying attention to the nutrients we take in is ultra important, but so is resting. So is resting. Now, when will this stuff be the most important to you? When will that be the most important to you? When you start to pay attention to it. So focusing on this can be the lifeblood of a weight loss and wellness program that has lost its glitz and glamour, that's lost its, its uh, mojo or its appeal. We pay attention to these little minute things and let the program take care of the rest. Learn the basics, stick to it, and let the time enroll be the master of your self-discipline. Now I'm gonna throw this in I'm gonna throw this in because I'm sharing my experience today. As a basic training rule, it's always best to understand yourself. The uh, Shakespeare is, is quoted as, as uh, writing a line into, I believe it's Macbeth, 
uh, it may not be, but I'm pretty sure it is, that says, to thine own self be true. Okay, so you have to be true to yourself and know thyself, okay? If you don't know yourself, you have to get to know yourself. The only, listen, and this is a new process. You guys, basic training, this is a new process. You're gonna have to plug into something to figure out what works the best. If your best, uh, it, it, the best thing is to not starve. When you starve or skip meals without being prepared mentally, you tend to binge later, okay? So I'm gonna give you my best suggestion. Let your breakfast, lunch, and dinner not just be unto the Lord, but let your breakfast be your medium meal. Okay, let your lunch be your large meal and let your dinner be your small meal. This, well, this lunch meal being your bigger meal will actually help fill, keep you full longer to, to get to your second meal where, or, or to your third meal where you're just basically topping the tank back off and then you're gonna wait until that's gone. Skipping breakfast can be some of the, it can can actually miss uh, your, uh, I'm sorry, mess some of your nutrient um, needs up and cause some of your hormones to not act properly, some of our hormones to not act properly. So getting these nutrients in is important. We, uh, a simplistic view. Your metabolism is a raging fire. We need wood on the fire. If you don't put wood on the fire, the, food, the, the, the fire is, is, is diminished. When we keep wood on the fire, it stays burning uh, pretty well. If we put too much wood on the fire, it, we can't burn it off, and it, and it results in the fat bus pulling into the, into town and storing some of that energy for later. So very rudimentary rules here. The, the basics, okay? In a case study, there's always gonna be different cases, okay? So, let me put this into perspective as well. I'm talking about meal, meal number one, meal number two, and meal number three. If, if we're only looking at this, and we're looking at this as the, this is the, the, the nutrients that feed the body. This is the nutrients that give us health during our weight loss experience. These are the ones that count. When we start to incorporate in our snack, we have more liberty on the program. So a snack can be eaten whenever you'd like. You can cut your snack up into portions and eat it whenever. Can you eat it in bed? You can, but remember, that it would be better to eat your snack between your meals. Best case scenario, eat the snack between your meals, okay? Try to get your, your eating done and try to go to sleep on an empty stomach. These are gonna be some of the best, listen, these are some of the best suggestions we have for weight loss success. Stick to these and be blessed. Now watch, one last thing to do, focus on the win. Win is the focus. Focus on when, not necessarily what. Get your what's worked out. We, we've talked about your what's, your amounts, your, uh, your combinations, what I'm going to put in those combinations, the portions we're going to put in those combinations. Deal with the wins for success. When I'm going to have breakfast, when I'm going to have lunch, when I'm going to have dinner, when I'm going to be done eating for the day, when I'm going to start eating for the day, when did I wake up, when did I wake up, when do I go to sleep, when did I get my meals in, okay, when did I start drinking water, how much water, how much, by when, keep up with this stuff. If you keep up with this stuff, you can focus on those things and you'll take your focus away from food and other things that will distract you from your weight loss and wellness program. I hope you've enjoyed this basic training series. Listen, subscribe to my text alerts, text 
31996, and the word you'll want to text is my Jason, all one word, my Jason. I, should we start eating the same time every day? Definitely start to eat. Uh, Debbie, if, if you're starting to eat at the same time, it needs to be in relation to uh, some, when you wake up or uh, you're, you're gonna start your metabolism roaring when you eat. It's part of uh, what we'd like to do. I sure still have problems understanding this window. Um, I, I don't, uh, maybe I need to, to, to ask me that a little bit but, uh, differently, Nelly. What do you have a hard time understanding about the window? <clears throat> it's best to get your eating in within a certain amount of time. That would be your eating window. Your eating window should be when your body is accepting nutrients, which is according to studies of how the human body works, we're supposed to eat and, and absorb nutrients while we're awake. So we try to adhere to the get woken up, eat some food, let your body start to use those nutrients and send them where they go. Okay, and then by the end of the day, we want to be done eating. So when we go to sleep, our body's not trying to process food, it's trying to rest well. Yes, when you wake up, I would start my little clock or my timer and I would try to, to eat. Now, one of the neat things to remember as you're, as you're studying and learning yourself and being true to yourself, Debbie, is be sure to pay attention to hunger. Uh, if you're not hungry first thing in the morning, you probably don't need to be an early eater. But if you are hungry first thing in the morning, you should probably put some wood on the fire and give your body some nutrients to burn off. This will wake up the rest of your body, okay? Just don't eat your biggest meal first thing in the morning because chances are you're gonna be hungry again later. If you're adding working out or anything like that into the equation, those are things to be uh, considered later, not necessarily basic training, and should definitely be something that you work out between you and God and us on the Shibola team uh, to help you better understand how to absorb things like proteins and things like that when it comes to working out. For now, you guys, if that is part of your questions and things that, that really bother you or things that make you go, hmm, let's feed our workout body fat. How about that? When you go to the gym, if you feel depleted, that's a good thing. You're, you're, you're getting rid of the starches and sugars in your blood and hopefully your body's gonna turn around and start burning that, uh, the body fat off that we so desperately want to get rid of. Excess body fat's gotta go. Take a body fat assessment. Go watch your daily doses. Take the test, pass the test, and earn your phase one badge, and you will be blessed. So long. See you later, Facebook. And...